Hey everyone, Microwave Sam here. I'm going to show you how to get Dolphin GameCube and Wii emulator. Dolphin will run on Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, 32 bit or 64 bit, Mac OS X, Lion or Greater, and Linux. Windows 7 64 bit is most recommended because it works the best, and generally, Windows will run games faster and with less issues. So, let me talk about CPU. The better your processor is, the better your overall performance will be. The CPU is the most important factor when deciding how well Dolphin will run on your computer or laptop. A bad processor or CPU would be the Intel Pentium 4. It's not going to get the job done and it will technically run the games but never be fast enough to play at enjoyable speed so it's not worth using at all. An average processor would be the AMD Athlon. Athlon. X2 6000 plus it's not going to be the CPU of choice because sometimes it'll work but a few games will be playable but for the most part it's not going to be at an enjoyable or acceptable speed a good CPU would be the AMD Phenom 2 X4 955 it's not going to be the best processor but it's going to be playable for most games at acceptable speeds and it's going to play more games at faster speeds than the average processor, the Athlon, Athlon. And so this CPU is a better choice, but the, an excellent CPU is going to be an Intel i5-2500K or an i7 or even greater because with this processor, it's going to be a really good choice for Dolphin because it's going to be able to play games at full speed and you're going to have the best overall experience with this CPU because uh, it's going to be strong enough to handle it and it's going to be able to run everything smoothly and just perfectly. Moving on to GPU. Having a good video card is important for maintaining good speed with high graphics settings. A bad GPU or a bad graphics card would be the Intel integrated graphics chips. It's not a good choice for Dolphin because some of them and most of them actually will not work at all. And some, if they do work, will be so slow and produce graphic errors and just have games running at very low uh, resolutions so it's gonna just not be recommended an average graphics card would be the ATI HD 3650 it's not a good choice because it won't be able to run games in, in high graphic settings and if you're playing the Wii or a GameCube game on your computer you're most likely wanting to play it in a good graphic setting because your computer is much stronger than your Wii or GameCube by this time and you just want to see how it looks like on the computer. So this average graphics card won't work that well because the resolution will be pretty low and it's it's not going to be a good choice. But good graphics card, an NVIDIA 8800 GT, it's good because it'll be able to run most games at a 2.5x to 3x internal resolution. So it'll be generally fine if you have something around this NVIDIA 8800 GT, it's going to be a good choice. But an excellent graphics card, an AMD HD 6850, it's going to be a really good choice for Dolphin because the graphics card will allow you to run games as fast as your processor will allow while not losing any game speed at 4 times internal resolution. So it's going to be a very recommended graphics card because... It's going to be a high resolution while playing the game at a good speed. So it's good for the process. If you have a good processor, a good graphics card, it's going to be maintaining that uh, good resolution, as I said, and a good speed. So you'll be able to play games smoothly and uh, perfectly. For RAM, 2 gigs or more is recommended. But RAM speed or the amount of RAM generally has no effect on emulation speed itself. But it's still good to have those 2 gigs or more. At max, Dolphin only runs on 3 cores and won't use all of your 4 or 6 core CPU. But if you still have a dual core computer, it still should work, but it won't be the best. We'll get to this later, but the supported dump formats or the file types that Dolphin can run are GCM or ISO, GCZ, CISO, or WBFS. Step 1 is to check your system type and processor. On your desktop, you can go to the bottom left to the start button and then right click on the place where it says computer, 
then click on properties. In the next pop-up, it's going to show you all the information of your computer including your processor and your system type. As you can see, I have a 64-bit. Step 2 is to download and install WinRAR or an extracting program of your choice. So on your desktop, you want to open up an internet browser such as Google Chrome. Then you want to go to this website which I'll leave in a link in the description. This is the website for downloading WinRAR. WinRAR is just an extracting program because Dolphin will be in a zip file and you'll need to extract it. So first of all you want to click on the one that applies to your operating system. For me, I had a 64-bit system type for Windows. So I'm going to pick that x64 uh, download right over here. Um, I have it highlighted. And then I'm going to just run it after it's downloaded. Then you can just go next. Then just keep on waiting until it's installed. Then pl click OK because that's it and done. WinRAR's installed. Nice. Step 3 is to update your DirectX runtime. So going back to your browser, you want to go to this website. I'll leave a link in the description. And this is the DirectX end user runtime web installer. I'm just going to check the system requirements and some supported operating systems. This is for Windows by the way. And now you can download it. You do not have to download this malicious software removal tool so you can just skip it. And then you, once it's downloaded, you just want to double click it or just click it once and then run it. Now it will bring you to the setup page. You want to agree, uh, accept the agreement. And then you can uncheck this box and then press next. And then after it's installed, you can just press next and finish up. Now it's finished and you've installed DirectX Runtime. Step 4 is to install the Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 redistributable package. So going to this website, I'll leave a link in the description, you can find a 64-bit and a 32-bit version. So you want to click the one that it is that applies to you. For me, it's a 64-bit version. Then once you download it, it'll just run the setup and then you have it installed. So I'm going to run the setup. I actually had this already installed on my computer. Uh, most of you probably do have it already installed, but this is a precaution if you don't have it installed already. So then I run the setup, and it's going to say, oh, you already have a newer version. But actually, I, I just have this version, and it, and it just said that you have the most up-to-date version, basically. So if you don't have the version or the 2010 Microsoft uh, C++ visual redistributable package then just run it and set it up and you'll be fine. Step 5 is to download and install the Dolphin emulator. So going back to my browser I'm gonna type in this website I'll leave a link in the description and this is the Dolphin emulator website and then once you go to this website this is actually what you're seeing right now is me looking at the FAQ or the facts of the website just a little guide if you ever have any problems and it just shows you some little facts about dolphin and about the game speed and differences between 64 bit 32 bit how to know if your system supports dolphin little facts like this so i'm just gonna go up here can you use all ps3 wireless controller yes you can and can you use a weird mode yes you can but I'm going into the main facts about Dolphin, the main uh, installation. And here's some error fixing if you encounter these errors that might pop up, like the VCOM 9, so, well, the VCOM 100.dll is not found. But you go to this website, dolphinemulator.com slash download, and then you download for Windows or Mac OS X, 32-bit, 64-bit, I'm going to use the 64-bit version, and you just click here. So it's going to download in a zip file, as you can see in the bottom left. And now it's going to be saved to my downloads folder. And I am going to just wait until it finishes. And I'm going to head there after it finishes and extract it using WinRAR that I showed you in step 1 or 
Step two, actually. Now I'm gonna right click it, and then extract to dolphin, to extract it to uh, a dolphin folder with all the contents that I need. Um, as you can see, right click and it says to extract to dolphin, blah blah blah, and then the folder is gonna appear after it's finished extracting, and then dolphin is right over here, the program. Now if you run it, it'll pop up like so. You can open it, run it. And it's already installed, it's already downloaded, it's, it will work if you open up a game at this point. Step 6 is to download MicroTorrent for Wii games. So MicroTorrent is going to be used to get torrents for Nintendo Wii games. You can also use it to get GameCube games. And I find it the easiest way to get the games. Uh, there are multiple different ways, but I'm focusing on the Wii game through uTorrent or MicroTorrent. So once you go to this website, just go to the free download section and then you can go to MicroTorrent uh, stable and then you just download it. Then once it's downloaded, you can run the setup. It's a very short setup and then uh, you'll have MicroTorrent on your computer. So just gonna wait for this setup It'll take just a little bit more seconds, and now it's done. I'm going to run this setup. And now... I am going to hit next. I'm going to hit next again. I'm going to hit next, and agree, and next. And then I'm going to uncheck this. I don't want it to start up when I start up my computer. Now I'm going to click next. Uncheck this, because it's just some advertisement. Next. And then you want to uncheck this go to the second option and uncheck those and you want to decline this because you do not want to install these just extra peripherals that you don't actually need so uTorrent's done uh, it's gonna appear right over here and now I'm just gonna exit this because we're done installing it and move on to the next step step 7 is to download a Wii game so going to google.com you can search up the name of your Wii game that you wanna uh, get or the GameCube game and after the name of that game you type in torrent so right now I'm searching Monster Hunter Try Torrent and then I went to this website Pirate Bay is one of the websites that I sometimes use and then once you read the comments to see if it's legit you can uh, it's gonna just access out a lot of uh, things pop up on these type of websites so I'll just look at more on Pirate Bay and what you wanna always look for is more cedars and leeches because when there's more cedars and leeches that means your download will go much more quickly it takes a long time to download torrents and it uses a lot of your bandwidth so everything else will run slower while you uh, torrent stuff usually unless you have very nice internet but for me things run slower then you just open it up and then it starts downloading. Now the download can take quite a while, so don't be surprised if it takes maybe it says 24 hours to finish. It does take that long sometimes, depending on how much people are seeding. So you always want to have this good ratio. Maybe a two to one ratio of seeders to leechers is always pretty decent, but all you want to do is look for more uh seeders and leechers and uh, the files are usually 4.7 gigs for Wii games and like 1.2 gigs for GameCube games. Step 8 is to customize Dolphin for best performance. So you can go to the folder where Dolphin is and I usually right click and then I send it to the desktop creating a shortcut. So after a shortcut's made I can always go on my desktop and have this Dolphin executable file on it and I can run it. So config it and then you can write the frame limit to anything you want like for better computers you can leave on auto but for worse computers and computers that don't have as good of a CPU you can lower it like to 30 or 60 now for audio I uh, usually I just leave it the same I guess and then GameCube there's some Wii options but for the Wii options I do 16 to 9 and let's see where's the resolution here interface paths okay let's go to graphics now graphics uh 
I am using Direct 3D9 just in the full resolution. This is what I'm gonna change. Let's see. Uh, yep, Direct 3D9 works. And now full resolution. I usually, since I have a pretty decent computer, I use 1280 by 720 and four six uh four uh, the 16 to 9 ratio. And then I'll use a full screen because I like playing the Wii games on the computer full screen. You can also config the Wii Remote, GameCube Pad, and such settings as that. But usually I just do the graphics, config the frame limit, and then I am all set. That's basically all you do. You can customize it, see what works for you because what works for you doesn't work for the next person. And depending on what type of computer you have and what processor and what graphics card, uh, the customization is very different. You just have to keep on testing it and see what works. Step 9 is to run and test the Wii game. So once the Wii game is finished downloading, it'll start saying seeding at the uTorrent place. You can highlight it and then delete it once it says seeding and once it says the download is done. After that's finished, you can file and exit from uTorrent. And then you just press yes. And now you can go to Dolphin. Open it up. I have the shortcut over here. Now, once you open it up, you can open an ISO file. Like I said in the beginning, there are f there are five different supported uh, files that Dolphin can open. ISO is one of them. So once you open it, Monster Hunter Try is going to open up. Sometimes the torrent downloads a bunch of these compressed files in which you need to extract. But in this case, the torrent just downloaded a simple ISO file for me. So I'm going to just show you some little what it looks like on the PC. Uh, my recording equipment isn't that great. Um, I didn't have the frame rate recording too high, so it doesn't look as good as it can be. But this is what it kind of looks like. It has a pretty nice quality and because it's on the PC. And I'm just walking around. You can play with your Wii Remote, but I didn't show it in this tutorial. I'm using the mouse. Uh, to move, it's like WASD, and then the mouse is like the weird mult. So those are just a couple things uh, on the PC compared to the Wii version of Monster Hunter Tri. And then it just looks like a nice game that you can just play on your PC. You know, if you get bored, you just pop up this emulator, play some old GameCube games and Wii games to relive uh, those days. Yep. So it looks pretty nice and hopefully this helped you at all, at least a little bit. Uh, thanks for watching everyone and please rate, comment, some, and subscribe. So I'm just gonna finish up, get some honey, and then have a nice day.